the belladonna top and tunic from love notions a top and a tunic slash dress super simple satisfying makes and i'm going to share some details about how i made mine there's also a third one that was my muslin that turned out super wearable so stay tuned Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing with a lot of practical content for you to actually see how things are done. Here I show all types of sewing projects from the very very beginner friendly like today's one to the most complex. Before I start I just want to give you a huge hug and thanks for all the birthday wishes from yesterday's video and the day before. I've had three videos in a row. <laughs> So thank you for your support. I am overwhelmed with all the messages. I will reply to all of them. There's a lot, but I will because I always reply. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. And I've had a wonderful day yesterday. And today being 41, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Just rolling with this decade and I'm taking everything positive that being this age brings me in my life. So thank you so much for that. So this pattern is the Bella Donna tunic and top from Love Notions, a very popular pattern and it's shortened by LBD. If you're in the Love Notions pattern support group, I would say it's as popular as the Laundry Day Tee. This is a Feature Friday pattern for today and it's only $5. And it's the woman's version and the little girl's version. So both of them are $5 today. It's a really cute pattern, very simple, easy to sew. And as I've mentioned, it's got a top length and then a tunic length. For the sleeves, it's a really simple dolman sleeve that can be short, can be three quarters, and then you can add a cuff and turn it into long sleeves. For the short sleeves, there is a little band that goes there. And for the neckline, there's lots of options. A simple scoop neckline, a cow neckline, a hoodie, you know, you can choose. And if you're making the top version, you can cut the curve off and add a band to the bottom. That's also part of it. This pattern is for medium weight knit fabrics. You know, it has to stretch horizontally and vertically. Mentions a 40% stretch horizontal and it also needs some vertical. You just find one that stretches up and down really well. Rayon blends, French terry, sweater knit. And if you see that it stretches less than 40, if it stretches 20, you might need to size up. For the three garments I'm going to show you, I've made them in three different fabrics. My muslin is made in rayon spandex, super duper stretchy. One other top is made in a more medium weight knit that is sort of like athletic wear, I would say. And the dress is made in ITY fabric. So different types, different weights, and you can see how different they look. They all look great. The size for this pattern comes from extra small to triple extra large. I'll put the little chart here so you can have a peek. And there aren't any finished garment measurements in this pattern, but I can say it's a nice and roomy pattern. It's not a tight fitting garment and you're meant to choose your size based on your high bust. You know, so based on that, I chose a size large for my top. And then because I wanted to make a dress, not a tunic, I wanted to make sure I had enough room down there on the dress so it wasn't that close to me. So I blended out to an extra large for the tunic. This pattern is so, so easy to sew. I mean, this is easier than making a t-shirt with sleeves. It's just shoulder seams, side seams, hems, the neckline, however you're going to do it little bands there and you're done but that doesn't mean I took it lightly and just went ahead and made it you know I, with every single project being you know quite simple or complex I do take the time to get the pattern to measure the pattern to measure lengths you know when you've got discrepancies in your body of lengths you can really tell that in the fit even with a simple style like this that you would think might be more forgiving, you know? So I've always measured my apex height, my waist height, made sure I had the right circumferences where I needed them. <laughs> so I'm going to be showing you in Up Close and So Personal how I've chosen my size, how I've lowered the neckline, how I cut new binding pieces for the neckline, how I turned the tunic into a dress, I did some sneaky color blocking to get my dress out of one meter. I think I needed like a little bit more, but I was determined to make it out of that fabric. So let's hop into some practical things I took into account before actually making my garment. I 
chose a size large of the top pattern and I made a quick muslin with a scrap fabric, tried it on and determined that I wanted the neckline three inches lower. So you can see how I just freehand drew a new curve there. I took that little piece and put it on top of my pattern piece. The front and back are the same pattern pieces you just change the neckline and I drew it there. This is the tunic pattern and I've done a lot of red lines there, there and another one down there. The sizes I've chosen are an L up above here underneath the arm. That's the L there starting to blend into an extra large there in between in between until here it's on the extra large and I want to have a lot of room at the hips because I'm lengthening this tunic into a dress. Tunics are hard to wear for me because I can't wear tights under them and without that I would just have a really really short mini skirt and I can't do that <laughs> so it's either a shirt length normal or a dress just from experience and knowing I have to lower my bust darts on dotted designs I know my apex is lower than what is usually drafted so I've measured from the top there discounting seam allowance and here is my apex height and I just want to make sure that the widest part here is going to be at that level so I'm, I made a line above that but an inch above that and I'm going to lengthen there one inch and that will mean that I'll have a wider part there available for my bust rather than this wider bit hitting up higher where my apex is not you know so I'm going to add an inch there and I'm also going to add an inch at the official shorten and lengthen line so that my waist hits at the correct spot. This marks the waist, this marks the hip. So I've got, I've got an inch there, I've got another inch here. And because I want to make a dress, I'm going to add six inches right there. So to have a dress length, I need a total of eight inches extra. So these other six will be there. I'll put paper behind all these and just through the lines on the sides. So I'll do that and then I'll show you how it looks. Okay, there's the inch I added above my apex point. So now the fullest part here is actually going to be around my bust volume. I think that's going to give me a better fit. That is that the official shorten and length of line to lengthen the waist, the bodice area. So I added an inch there to account for my height difference as well. And then down here, I have kept the grain line the same, kept this line the same and added six inches there. Now this creates a discrepancy between this bottom part, but I do know I want this width at the bottom. I've measured it and it's plenty volume for my hips and to fall like a nice dress. So I don't want to make this swing out larger like that. I don't want that. I want to keep that. So you can see the line starts going there and I'm actually closer to the large here at the hips. But if I measure here across, it's plenty of room for my hips. And then it just goes out and reaches that original line up there. It just needs to be nice and neat and make sense. You know, you don't want a squiggly line here on the sides. So I'm going to cut that out and clean it out and then I'll be ready to cut. Okay, that's how my pattern piece looks with the added length there, there, and then here. So basically these length adjustments are to account for my bodice height and my length around this area and where my fullness of the bust is and then this extra is just to make the tunic into a dress while keeping that nice curve, keeping the shaping here on the sides and now this is the extension of the dolman for the three quarter length sleeves and then if you add a cuff here it will turn into a long sleeve there is another line there that is the cut line for short sleeves and I'm just going to fold that away and cut my pattern pieces like that. For the shirt I added the inch above the apex as you saw me do there and then what I did differently down here was shorten the shirt. I found the shirt length a bit too long for me so at the shorten and length and line here I overlapped three inches. So I have three inches less there but because I added one there it makes my shirt two inches shorter in total which is the length that I want keeping the same curve down there. Now if you wanted to add a band to the hem that's the cut line there and the band will be added there. Because I cut my neckline deeper I'm measuring the new neckline circumference there, put my tape along my seam line so not right at the edge a little bit in and it's 36 centimeters and that times two is 72 centimeters. I know because I've transferred the neckline to my other versions, I know what the circumference is. For this muslin, I'm gonna do the binding inside as you've seen me done before with the willow wrap dress. 
that's the width I've chosen and the length will be the 80% because of the fabric choice. This fabric is rayon spandex, it's mega mega stretchy and that's why I've chosen the 80%. Now with other versions I'm going to be doing just neck bands and those will have a different width and the length will also be different depending on the fabric. I really want to use this fabric, it's a 90Y, I like the print, I have exactly a meter and I need a few centimeters more. <laughs> so, you know, you can see how much extra I need, it's nothing. I've folded that away, so this is my neckline for the front, it'll be below that and it'll be around there on the sleeve. I've been just eyeballing this. <laughs> So that will be folded there. I'm going to add 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance right there. And then this top part is going to become like a yoke for the front and the back. And I'm going to cut this out of this black. So I'll have a bit of black on the top and then we'll come all this print. And it's how I'm going to get this dress to work with a tad less fabric than what I had. Otherwise, once those seams are on, then you, you just treat this as one piece and then it's so simple. It's just shoulder seams, this neckline, and then the little bands on the sleeves, hem, just so easy. Oh, disgusting. Oh, I've just stepped on a slug. Ugh. Okay, I, I go through a lot of things to bring you outside videos. I hope you know that. I'm going to show you first the muslin. And this was a remnant from another project I made. This fabric came from Minerva and I had about 65 centimeters left, which is maybe two thirds of a yard around that, way, way less than a yard. And I thought, yeah, perfect to try the feet and um, see if those adjustments I made on paper were gonna translate well onto my body. And I was really, really uh, glad they did because this is a totally wearable top. There's nothing not wearable about it. So for the scoop neckline on the pattern, it says you can serge and fold under. And I would try that if I had a cover stitch machine or if the fabric I was working with was medium weight and had a lot of recovery, a lot of spandex in there. But generally, it's not an option I go for, especially for rayon spandex. I don't think that technique will keep the neckline flat. It, it could sort of stretch over time. So it just depends on the fabric, whether you can do that simple option. Um, there is also a faced option in the pattern and it's actually very similar to what I've done with the Willow wrap dress. Um, so you've seen me do this before. It, the only difference is because this fabric is so stretchy and so lightweight, I do it double. So nothing new here. You've seen me do this before. And because the fabric was so stretchy, I measured this as you saw me doing and I calculated 80% for this one. Um, it's not a fixed amount. I'm very flexible into how much shorter I make things depending on the fabric. But if I stretch this, it's like mega, mega stretchy. You know, the little bands here that go on the short sleeves are a tad smaller. So you have to stretch them to fit around the circumference. And that's not difficult to do side seams and the hem is a little bit curved under there and it's folded up and twin needled very neatly and I think the fit is spot on. I'm really glad I lengthened the pattern around this area so that the fullness of the side seam was where my actual apex is which is a bit lower than what is usually drafted for in any pattern really. Any pattern company, I'll always have to drop the apex because that's how my body is, you know? I will show you fit clips of all of these after I've shown you all of them. <laughs> so you saw me do all those adjustments, you know, on the paper and I did the ones on the tunic after doing the ones on the top because I knew that lengthening here worked and then I went and lengthened below that area. So it was really good to make a muslin. I'm glad I did um, because that fabric, you know, wasn't really going to serve me for anything else. I was happy I had a tiny piece like that. From Chile, I brought a fabric that is like uh, for sportswear. It's wicking fabric. It's medium weight. Lovely, lovely print. I've shown this fabric on a haul that I did at my parents' backyard. <laughs> And it's really nice. It's You can see it drapes beautifully. It's just heavier weight. And the stretch is really good as well. I mean, it's very appropriate for this top. You know, it stretches horizontally and vertically. The difference for this one is that I did a neckband. So when I do a neckband like this, I cut it two inches. I have like a standard that I like to do 
two inches and then the length for this one because I thought it was heavier weight and a tad less stretchy than the viscose one I've just shown you. This one was cut at 85%. This one was surged and then stitched with a shallow zigzag stitch that stretches. Um, so it, it's a really nice neck band there and same bands there, same curved hem. It's exactly the same as the muslin, the same length, hemmed with a twin needle there nice and neatly. And I love how this looks and feels on. Yesterday was my birthday and I was busy for a while in the afternoon editing and putting together the video sharing my fabric. And then I got to work making the blue one because I'd already made the muslin before. And that's as much as I was gonna share with you. But last night when I was falling asleep, I kept thinking, no, I really want to make a dress. And it's because one of the lovely viewers from the channel, her name is Lynn. Uh, I saw her make a dress and post it on the Facebook group a few days ago. And I really, really liked it. And I thought, you know, it just stayed in my mind. She looked amazing with a tunic. Actually, she made a tunic. But in my eyes, I saw it like a dress. <laughs> I can't wear tunics. Tunics are more look like a winter thing. Um, in my books, I used to wear tunics a lot up until I lived in New Zealand when I had proper winter. I would live in those with tights and boots and I felt really good in that type of look. But a tunic now means bare legs and a really short dress. <laughs> can't pull that off anymore with this type of weather. So for me, it's either a top or a dress. So measuring the tunic pattern, I figured I needed 20 more centimeters. That's about eight inches. And that's how you saw me distribute that in different areas of the pattern so that it would make sense, you know? So I had a fabric and I was just really determined to have a dress in that fabric, but it was a little bit too short. So there come the little yokes into play. A little bit of color blocking is never wrong. It's always a lifesaver when you want to make something work yes or yes no other option and i've made my little yokes as you saw i've just got this seam there that is right above the bust now i'm pretty experienced in determining proportions on myself by eyeballing but if you're not and you're not sure if you want to do this where the line's going to be i always think it should be above the bust that's the most flattering place you don't want to put a line like right there like almost at the bust or through the bust that's not really good if i had been doubting myself i could have resorted to the muslin tried it on and put the pins where i really wanted the line to be while looking at myself in the mirror and then transfer that to the pattern so i knew where to cut so that is an option if you're fearful of adding extra seam lines that you're really not sure how they're going to look just pin them on yourself on a garment you've already made and that's much easier. In my case, I just went for it, just knowing it was gonna be okay because I can see those proportions in my head and that comes from experience, really. So that's the black right there. This is rayon spandex, this is ITY. They are both lightweight. They are both the same type of feel. So I, I was perfectly fine adding and, and stitching them together. You know, when you want to color block, you want to have the same types of weights sewn together or else it doesn't really work that much. So I've done the little bands with the black and I've done the neck band here with the black. Now, because this is rayon spandex, mega, mega stretchy, I cut this one at 80%, you know, and then it just goes down and I've kept the same curve at the bottom. I've done the twin needle there. I'll turn this one so you can see. Okay, inside out, you can actually see where the seam is. The seams are pressed down. The little band seams there on the short sleeves, just extend that and bring that in so you're not gonna have anything showing on the side. I think that's really cool. Neck band is on there. Seams on the sides are 3 eighths of an inch. They've been surged and sewn. And it's just really simple. And you know, when I tried it on the first time, I was amazed how flattering this design was how easy to wear and just flowy, you know. ITY can be really, really fresh, like for my weather. Even though it is polyester, there's something about the way it's made that is like really cool on my skin. So guess when I made this one, just now, literally, I finished and pressed it just now and I'm out here filming this video for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna step behind my house and change into all of these so you can see how they fit. So being a muslin, it was all about experimenting and the depth of this I really like. I really like how the binding worked out. 
I think calculation for this type of fabric is really good. You can see this brings it all in nicely there and it's so nice to wear, so soft. Okay, so here is the first one, the muslin, the one that was going to tell me if I made the right fit adjustments and I'm really happy with this fit. I don't have excess here or any pulling right there uh, where my full bust is. I think had I not l lowered this, I might have some pulling up here. I'm not sure, but I'm glad I made this adjustment for myself. Uh, being taller in this, being an adjustment I make to most every pattern, I wanted to have a go at this simple one to see if I could improve the fit and I'm really happy with the fit here on the side. Really happy with the length that I measured on the flat, that it translates to what I like. You can see there, two inches shorter than the regular length. And I really like this ease for the top. I know that for a tunic length or dress, I would like more ease down there. Than what the top has you know this is the neckband i put there with a 85 percent you know <laughs> length and it's nice and flat against me it's not gaping or, or bigger than it should be or smaller there's no puggers or anything and then you can see the little armbands there the length is really good i really like that and there's no risk of peeping bras on the side or anything like that this is the length that i like if I would left it original, it would be two inches longer, which I think is a bit long for my personal preference. And it's still nice and long, I mean, but I wouldn't want it any longer than that. You can see the curved hem there. And you know, it's got nice amount of ease. I think size large is perfect on me. You can see this ease is perfect for a top. Really nice. And I'm glad I made these before going onto the tunic. This is my tunic length into dress you can see how much ease there is here and that's how I wanted it to be had I not blended out to an extra large down there I think it would be more tight fitting and I didn't want that I wanted a like flowy look you know I could always wear a belt with this if I wanted to or just wear it like this up on the top you know I kept everything black I didn't do a contrast neckband I could have using that fabric but I didn't want to I wanted to keep it all simple on the top and the same with the little band here, it's just all black. I think for this dress, I just really wanted to keep it simple. I really like this print. You can see how this yoke was cut. That's right above the bust right there. So it's not doing me any disfavors like by cutting my bust in half or anything like that. And I really like the scoop neckline. I really like this depth a lot. It's something I will do to all the patterns usually. As I mentioned before, this pattern is only $5 today. You can get it through my affiliate link. I make a small commission from that sale and that helps support me and what I do in this channel. I really hope you got some useful tips in this video, although the, the design and the garments are so, so simple. There's always extra precautions you can take to make the fit even better for your body. That is my aim, that you get something practical with every video and I really hope you enjoyed that. If you love the content, give me a thumbs up and I will see you soon with another sewing video. Bye and happy sewing!